you could give us a, a breakdown on the humanitarian situation and its present trajectory. I mean, we saw a decline in the UN appeal for Yemen this year after <coughs> quite significant increases in recent years. Does that mean that the situation is improving? Uh, well, th thank you, Wendy. And uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me to participate in this panel. Um, I think very often the humanitarian crisis in, in Yemen is overshadowed by uh, political developments and uh, concerns for the security in the country. And what we are seeing is that Yemen perhaps is becoming a forgotten humanitarian crisis. Uh, it remains one of the largest uh, humanitarian crises globally with some 14.7 million who are in need of some form of humanitarian assistance. Uh, 13 million of these are without access to safe water or sanitation. And a further 10 million people are in need of food, food uh, assistance, out of which 4.5 million are severely food insecure, which means that they are looking for their next meal on a daily basis. What we're also seeing is that some 8.6 million people are without uh, access to, to basic health care. Now, one of the things that we find most disturbing is that this crisis is disproportionately affecting Yemeni children. Um, it has the second highest rate of chronic malnourishment globally, with approximately half of children being um, stunted. Um, what we're also seeing is that the number of severely acutely malnourished almost stands at the third of a million children. Uh, many of the needs I just described, which are not abating, are the result of underdevelopment and lack of access to income. Um, themselves the result of underdevelopment and um, endemic poverty, which has been ongoing in the country for a number of years. But what we have seen was that if basic services and poverty was endemic before 2011, uh, the 2011 uh, revolution, uh, the political turmoil has led to its net collapse. Uh, today, as you said, uh, Wendy, more than half of people in Yemen live in absolute poverty. And just comparing, and I see it's on your handout, you can see that your average Yemeni earns around about a seven, 17th or what neighboring Omanis and Saudis earn. And when you uh, compare this with the fact that up to 90% of the staple foods in Yemen are imported, uh, you can see clearly see that uh, access to income is a key determinant of food security. Conflict and insecurity are, are other key drivers for humanitarian needs in Yemen. Conflicts in the north of the country have the last uh, decade has led to displacement of some 300,000 people. And for those of you who have following, been following news on Yemen, you will see that in the, in the last month or so, uh, up to 30,000 people have been displaced uh, by conflict in the south and also conflict in a governorate called Amran. Um, many of these uh, displaced have been able to return home, but they still have needs um, in terms of protection and other types of services. Uh, we've also seen over the last year, year and a half, some 20, sorry, 200,000 people who have returned in the south, in, in Abiyan governor, governorate. Uh, they are struggling to re-establish their lives. Uh, weak rule of law, coupled with conflict, means that many Yemenis, uh, if not the majority of Yemenis, do not have ad adequate protection. Uh, we've also seen widespread destruction of infrastructure, landmines, explosive remnants of war, um, which makes it extremely difficult for people to re-establish livelihoods and re-establish their lives. As humanitarians, we see our, our roles as saving lives and help helping people protect people's basic rights. We are trying to promote these objectives in a way that promotes durable solutions, but we also recognize the limitations of our mandate and advocate for partners to address the longer term agenda. As you mentioned, the uh, humanitarian requirement in 2013 was some $700 million. This year is short of $600 million. And I want to make it very clear that the reduced humanitarian requirement does by no means reflect 
that there is a reduction in humanitarian needs. It's rather a process of better targeting and prioritization through the 2014-15 Yemen humanitarian response plans. This means that we have a better focus plan. And that also means that we are better able to uh, direct donors to the most urgent activities within the plan. I'd like to just briefly talk about the, uh, the humanitarian strategy for the next two years before I round up. Um, we are targeting some 7.6 million people for assistance this year. And we do this through a, a two-pronged approach. The first uh, prong is, as we always do, to aim at addressing uh, life-saving assistance to the most vulnerable Yemenis. The second prong adapts a more, more longer-term perspective. It aims at provo uh, promoting durable solutions for the displaced, reducing overall vulnerability and dependency on assistance. Uh, this we are trying to do through a number of various approaches. One is building resilience in vulnerable communities through diversifying incomes, uh, livelihoods, uh, through early recovery. Uh, and with early recovery, we are trying to address the issues uh, that prevent communities from functioning. Again, the focus on livelihoods, local governance, um, rebuilding local institutions, as well as um, basic services and mine action. Another key element of this strategy is building capacity of local institutions and NGOs so that they can themselves can respond to and plan for emergencies. Uh, unfortunately, perceptions in amongst many Yemenis is that the situation is deteriorating rather than improving. Um, we see this as a result of, of the insecurity and conflict, as well as the inability to address uh, needs through provision of basic services. That being said, I think the political process and the transition in, in Yemen has made remarkable progress. For the first time, Yemeni youth and women have had a platform to express their vision for what, a fu what the future of Yemen should look like. That being said, a key challenge for the entire transition process, that unless there are tangible improvements in Yemeni's daily lives, it is unlikely that they will retain confidence in the political transition process. For this reason, at last month, uh, the humanitarian country team lobbied the Friends of Yemen to ensure that the humanita humanitarian dimension is addressed through their deliberations in future meetings. And our argument is that failing to address the humanitarian situation could lead to the undermining of the political gains that has been made so far. In short, if the humanitarian crisis is left unaddressed, it could reverse the overall transition efforts. For this reason, we strongly advocate the inclusion of humanitarian concerns across the um, across the discussions of the Friends of Yemen, whether it's aiming at short or long-term interventions. We are, of course, hoping that the revamped Friends of Yemen will provide guidance and support to the government to start addressing the long-term and underlying drivers of humanitarian needs. Thank you. Thanks, Tron. Um, just a quick follow-on question to that. Do you feel that um, the Friends of Yemen have taken those messages on board? Is, uh, what are the initial indications? Well, I, th I think if we, if we judge by uh, what member states expressed during the Friends of Yemen is, is that they have taken on board uh, many of the concerns that we have raised. Uh, and of course, um, as they are now looking at establishing working groups uh, through the Friends of Yemen, looking at the political, economic and security dimensions of the, of the crisis uh, and transition, um, I, I remain quite confident that they will actually start looking at these issues also through, um, also through the working groups that will be working at the, at the SANA level. Okay, great, thanks. Um, I mean, given all the issues that you've outlined, and we know that uh, you know, there have been flare-ups in, in conflicts, um, quite recently, in fact, um, 
are aid workers actually able to reach people in need? Um, yeah, if we look back at um, 2013, uh, and we've done some analysis in terms of our delivery of assistance, we did not reach uh, our target of reaching 7.7 .7 million people last year with humanitarian assistance, but we did reach more than 5 million people with humanitarian assistance, and that's across Yemen, despite conflict and despite access cons constraints and insecurity. Uh, we have a number of uh, risk mitigating measures and one of those I've already alluded to and that's building the capacity of, of national organisations, um, community based organisations as well as national NGOs <coughs> and through those means we are able to deliver assistance uh, across the country. That of course does not mean that as international organisations we should offload the risk onto local organisations. Um, there are also uh, some, uh, some issues related to many local NGOs being associated with uh, political parties, religious groupings, etc., etc. Uh, and in some instances, uh, local organisations might not be the best to deal with issues around protection, as they might be putting themselves at risk with dealing with these issues. Thank you very much. Um,